you eliminate the need for a generator. To show you what it feels like to be on board of one of these underway on the electric. And right now you can go 34 hours in that speed before you run out of battery. That's a long way. Hi guys, welcome back to Naughty Styles. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually leaving Rico at the dock because Udo and I, who I'm sure you remember from our video of Ocean Class 68, okay, correct. Udo and I are taking Green Line 40 out to really show you what the hybrid system will do for you. We're gonna really put it to the test. We're gonna show real numbers, real data, and you guys really get to experience what it's like to go out on the cruise on a Fort Lauderdale River. And that's in a high wind, in a hurricane approaching. <laughs> yes, you guys, the hurricane is approaching. We just heard that electricity will be shut down tomorrow and the crazy weather is coming. So don't be deceived by these beautiful blue skies in downtown Fort Lauderdale. We've yep. decided that we're doing it anyways because it has to be done. Yes. Let's we, do it. Let's do it. Let's take it out. Bye, Rico. Bye. All right, um, Paul, I see you guys later. Maybe, May maybe. <laughs> Hey, I don't need to do anything. The boat is doing it by itself. <laughs> We decided to pick you up after all. We were just, so I really we were just kidding. It. We can't do this without you. Exactly. Who has the camera, huh? <laughs> Look you're how almost, nice and quiet we're coming there. in. All right, you're good. He's on. Thanks for picking me up. Well, yeah, we decided it's more fun. We wanted to with without you, but then my camera had an error message. So <laughs> we kind of figured out we don't have a camera. What about the engine? You're not turning it on? <laughs> yes, we are running on electric. I mean, that's the beauty, one of the beauties of the hybrid. We are cruising the Fort Lauderdale River, the new river actually right now, and we are planning to cruise around the canal system and listen to the sound of silence. Well, we picked you anything. up. All you heard was the bow and stern yeah. That that's was the loud, loud sound. That's the loudest thing you hear when you're running on electric. That it is, is incredible. Pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, it's very strange not to hear anything, actually. Most captains really have a hard time not feeling, not hearing the diesel in the beginning. You have to restart the whole process on how to operate a boat. It's so strange. You hear very, very, very little bit. I mean, just a small bit of an electric engine sound, but so little. It's actually what you hear is the shafts in the shaft seals. Huh. Because you would not hear that on a diesel boat. Yeah. Oh, wow. This thing has quite a pickup. Yeah. If you need to get out of the way, you're going to punch it and it goes. The current is ripping pretty good. So we got to have to put a little more pressure on the rudders to get better control of the boat yeah so as soon as we get out of the river then we can play around a little more with your electric units but if you need to get out of your way it will go and it doesn't create much of a wake either it is completely silent in the back you just hear the water and that's it and that's the beauty of the green line hall the hall originally was designed for a hybrid system so this boat is equipped with twin 14 kilowatt electric motors 28 kilowatts equals roughly about 35 horsepower 32 35 horsepower and we push that boat to over eight knots with 35 horsepower and we are mm -hmm. in a 40 foot boat with an almost 14 foot beam that's pretty good and just cruising like intercoastal up and down i mean it's just the most comfortable nice speed you know the inner coastal and the great loop is basically the best environment for the hybrid mm -hmm. you have a slow zone you go in electric you have a speed zone, you're switching over to diesel, and as soon as you switch to diesel, you're recharging your batteries because your electric motors turn into two 10 kilowatt generators. We will do that as soon as we are out of the river, switching back and forth. I'm sorry, I have we to listen. We can't turn it off completely, no, we know. We, we gotta got to have it on. <laughs> I have to listen because we have a lot of traffic coming in because right now, 
everybody is bringing the boats from the barrier islands up the river to get out of harm's way for the hurricane. No, you guys, we were not joking. We really have a hurricane on the way. I mean, not a, a hurricane, tropical a storm, tropical storm. Which might, hopefully not, but uh, might become not, a hurricane. But we will have some nasty weather regardless. Right. So this is our last day to get this done because this yep. yacht has been sold and the owner was kind enough to let us show to you guys. So we are super, super thankful and excited that we get to do this because we've been wanting to do this for a while. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Flip in the fenders. Yes. Oh, right now. You we embarrassed? We're looking a little bit amateurs. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> we thought that's how people roll in Florida. We see it all the time, especially in haul over. And you probably saw when we took off the dog, having the side door right here, you can handle your spring cleat. It's very convenient. Anything very convenient. I mean, for anybody who's a normal sized person, not a Viking. Come on, what are you saying? <laughs> For me, this is a perfect door. No problem at all. That door is perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. You make everything look really small. You're not, you're not the great like boat model. They use me at a factory. If I fit in the cabin, it's a good that size. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Right now, we have 98%. We're drawing 295 watts on the boat because we just turned the AC off. Yep. And we're coming with 30 watts of solar power because at 98 you hardly will get any solar charge. We need to drop below 90 and 80 that the solar is going to kick in. We will drain the battery right now on purpose quite a bit so that we can show how the solar works. This particular boat is equipped with six solar panels with 330 watt each. What is the capacity of the battery bank? On the 40, that's a twin engine boat, mm -hmm. we come standard with two 13.8 kilowatt hour batteries. And you can upgrade it up to four. So you can do three or four, mm -hmm. you get maximum of four. But even in the standard boat, you're getting 26, 20. seven, almost 28 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Oh wow, we're only draining 300 watts. Yeah, right and now. plus the motors right now. That's only for the boat. This oh, shows oh, you only it, the got boat. It, got it, got it. Right now here, that's going to show us how many amps we have minus 148 amps, what we drain with the motors. That's an amp, so I need That's to convert. Amps. And, and what's the voltage? We do in 60 volts. 60 times 145, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is it's going to be on the screen while you guys were talking, the conversion yeah. will be on the screen yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> you're all really good at math. <laughs> so the engine's using the same battery bank like the boat is using, like the house bank technically. Let's call it repo or hybrid battery because we do have a house bank the house is a 12 volt, what supplies all the lights, the pumps oh, okay. and everything on 12 volt. Yeah. Then our LiPo battery, the hybrid battery, runs on 60 volts. Uh -huh. So that means we charge the LiPo batteries with the solar, mm -hmm. we charge the LiPo batteries with shore power, and when you run the diesel, your E-units charge the LiPo batteries with 20 kilowatts. So then your inverter, and that's the Victron system, your inverter converts your 60 DC to 110 AC. So that's why you have two different screens. That's your 110 screen. This 290 watts is for 110. Yeah. So right now it's getting a little warm. If you want to turn on the air condition right down there in the breaker board, mm -hmm. there's three switches. Just turn them on real quick. Then you see the difference. It's on a lower bank. There's a main breaker. There is the main and then all the three units, turn them all on. Now we turned on the air condition. That is one of the biggest advantage on the hybrid boats. You eliminate the need for a generator. Yeah. So no more listening, no more smelling, no more feeling vibration and no more servicing a generator. Yeah. So that is one of the biggest beauties. Are we still on? Yeah, it takes a while till they kick on. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a delay. Yeah. All these air conditioned units have a delay. Mm -hmm. So that means the way it's programmed, so they're not kicking in all at the same time. Yeah. So we have a tropical air conditioning package on this particular boat because it's been ordered for Florida. The tropical air conditioning gives you three AC units. On a normal use, you get along with one. Mm -hmm. If you have a hot, hot, humid day and you lock the boat up like on a rainy Florida day and you run it, then one is definitely not going to make it. But in a lot of times you get along with two. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, three units and you cool your boat down. Yeah. One is kicking in, you see, yeah, 1200 yeah. watts. One unit has a peak draw from 1200 watts. So with one unit, you can always make it through the night. So mm -hmm. when you running one unit through the night on a humid Florida hot night, it's gonna cycle in and out and you usually go through about three to three and a half kilowatts. 
-hmm. You got almost 30 Through kilowatts, don't you? Yeah, so you have plenty. You yeah. got yeah. plenty. We manage now on Florida boat shows and in Miami boat show to run one air condition, keep the door open to the mm -hmm. whole time to the show, never plug the boat in. It's all about how you're going to manage your boat. That is pretty impressive. So when you get the tropical air condition package, you get a whole windscreen set. So you mm -hmm. have screens for the outside. It's a mesh, it's a see-through, but it blocks about 95% UV and it blocks a lot of heat. So it doesn't heat it up so quickly. So yeah. Now, when you're on a boat with two people, one unit is almost ever enough when you've got mm -hmm. it covered with the windshield covers. Now I can turn the radio off because we are out of the river. The first question we usually get on boat is, how far can I go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I cross the Atlantic with, uh, <laughs> with a Green Line no. 40? I mean, I mean, can you? You probably could do a lot of things, I mean, but maybe you shouldn't. People go down the Niagara Falls in a barrel too. Correct. I mean, it's very, it's yeah. very true. <laughs> no. Yeah. Is it advisable? So, no. You know, we post a thousand nautical mile range on diesel alone. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if you're going to go up through England, Scotland, Iceland, yes, you could do it. And people have done it. I don't know about the green line, but yeah. people mm -hmm. done it in much smaller of boats. Course. We always post. You have a range of 20 nautical miles. Mm -hmm. on electric but that is a very unfair statement actually but we got to post something and i usually use examples for me using the boats trying what can you do a few years ago my wife and me we took a 40 to the miami boat show and they said we got to be there at nine o'clock so yeah. we left lauderdale at 6 45 in the morning yeah we had 11.8 hours on the diesel we had 98 percent battery we went on the inside we arrived at 8.45, mm -hmm. the boat show was not ready, so we were circling as a strong current in front of the boat show with hundreds of other boats till it was our turn to tie up. By the time we tied up, it was 12.45. Oh, wow. Welcome to Miami. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when I had the boat tied up and I shut it down, I had 12.2 hours on the diesel and 95% battery. So we traveled for 17 nautical miles, we boated for six hours, we still had 90 eight percent battery and only put 20 minutes on the diesel yeah because at the time let's slow it down when we were putting around going in gear and out yeah you don't the use solar much panel at all right we're recharging faster yeah then we were burning through the battery that's why we came in so if you just do idle I forward it, yeah guys. so now you see the 22 amps drop because look at this we got two ac units going yeah and now we're drawing 2000 watts 110 Mm -hmm, from the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the combined draw of the boat and the motors. Oh, okay. When you turn the air condition off right now, then you will see this one going to zero as well. Here we go. Now it gets real quiet. So actually the fan from the air condition is louder than, louder than yeah. the engine. So true. Here, hold on you guys. I'll give you a real sound here. Nothing. <laughs> so now you see a 200 watt draw. Yeah. That one is down to 11. But now you see 1100 watts coming in from the solar as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, because we are drawing power. Look at that. So now the way I can draw power more, you see this when I use the bow and stern thruster. So now the battery charger will kick in and that's your battery charger to recharge the 12 volt system. So the battery charger, what will be operated, the lithium 60 volt DC gets converted in 110. Uh -huh. The battery charger is plugged into 110 and that's how you recharge your 12 volt batteries when you're on electric. Yeah. So that means your 12 volt system gets charged either through the battery charger or as soon as we fire up the diesels, the alternator will take over that yeah. job and yeah. recharge it. Yeah. So that gives you always redundancy because you always have solar, you always have 110 then and you always have a battery charger so you never run out of battery. We don't have like ideal conditions, we're no. still charging right. like almost 1200. Yeah. You know, it's it compensating completely what the boat is using right now. Yeah. And here we have now minus four, that is your battery charger, but it will get compensated from the solar right now. Mm -hmm. So now you will see, I'm going to go in reverse, and now you see how the amperage is going up. Oh yeah. Yeah, minus 500, almost yeah. 600. And the bow thruster is the loudest thing it on the boat. It is truly the loudest thing on the boat. And you know, I made so much fun. We have that sandbar over there, and sometimes people drifting off the sandbar in the canal, then you sneak up beside them, and when you're right beside them and they're sleeping in a the boat, you go, 
Well, God's better in there. Than yeah. like, oh, oh, so, oh <laughs> no, so it, true because it, you don't expect no, it. No, it's literally you stealth mode. You can't be yeah. on stealth mode. First of all, the convenience not have to have a generator. The next thing is the redundancy. Mm -hmm. The way the boat is designed, we have two 12 volt batteries for the bow thruster, two 12 volt batteries for the stern thruster, mm -hmm. one each motor, and a house battery. That's your 12 volt system. So if you would run really, really dry for whatever reason, you can parallel all this together and get the diesel started. So if you're going to be somewhere up north when you have 40 hours darkness or yep. no solar and yep. you would run your batteries down, you can always get the diesel started. You always have backup for the backup the way the boat is designed. And now you hear, I mean, we're cruising down the canal, we hear only the water. You don't need much power. Like oh. if you do this in, in a coastal no. or side no. arms. And as I said, it's 14 kilowatt each, look at that fluid. Yeah. That boat picks up speed quick. Oh yeah, I mean, we can see yeah, it here. The like knots going up, look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, seven, two, we're gonna get to Oh, we're gonna get to eight. I don't know if we have current going yeah, in Yeah, we got a little right bit now. current, so it's seven, four, seven, six. Seven, 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 so almost eight. So on electric yeah, only. Seven, seven, nine, so. there we go, no problem. So now let's bring it back a little bit. Let's look at the hybrid and motor gauges. These two are our hybrid gauges and motor gauges. That gives you, first of all, motor. That's the amperage, how much amps the motor is gonna draw. Your temperature, it's in 36 degrees Celsius and your RPMs. So I'm going on zero. The 1.8 amps is what you need to get the clutch disengaged for the diesel, because as soon as you're on electric, you disengage your diesel, you run the electric. And then we have a 12 volt pump for the raw water cooling and mm -hmm. a 12 volt pump for the fresh water. So that's because the little amperage. So that's the little amperage. That's the thing, when you go on electric the first time, now we have a little current and the wind. So you really need to watch your water indicator because you don't have the feeling. Then just floor it on the starboard side a little bit. Then, yeah. you, then you get a feeling for the electric. It's pretty responsive actually. Yes, it's responsive, but it's different. So you got to get the use for it to be in complete silent. And now we turn the radio off. Now there is no wind, no noise, no nothing. It's just a, a little winding noise what's coming actually from the shaft seals. What you would never hear when a diesel is rumbling. Yeah, you would never it's hear. Still out. You, yeah. you, would hear, you would only hear the diesel yeah. engine. Yeah. And when you ref that boat up to full speed, you hear a little flapping. What is actually the prop cavitation? You hear uh, all that stuff because there is no diesel rumble. Yeah. So the noise you hear is coming from all these other elements. What a diesel motor is always covers over. So true. Let's just go past the pylon here. So what we do then? We're going to do the switch to diesel. What is a real simple task, but we all do everything manual because on the bottom line, we want to keep the system as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. We're all Which for I that. Like. I, I'm all, all for, for that. that. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of everything automated. So let's get give them a little. When you start boating with electric, you start a completely different boating. When I grew up using a bow truss that was amateurs, we had to learn how to operate yeah, the motors. Yeah. When you turn the boat only with the motors, and then you look at the draw on the battery and then you turn it with the motors and bow and stern thruster, mm -hmm. you are way more efficient. So That's the true. same is when I'm going into the river where we have tight corners and strong currents, I quite often use my bow thruster because it's mm -hmm. made quicker and way more efficient than then using start the, yeah, steering yeah, yeah, or yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to change the whole way you operate a boat. And it's actually fun. I mean, all our customers, they tell us about, they set all this up on their smartphones, so they monitor their boats, they play with the charge and with this to maximize. So you can efficiency. see, you can set it all up on an iPad also? On your iPhone, iPad iPhone. and smartphone, yes. I had a customer, he was over in Greece and called me, my maintenance man is, I can't reach him and my boat is losing battery power. I don't know what's going on, can you check it? So he had his whole boat, everything on his smartphone, wherever you are in the world, you can monitor your boat. That's pretty cool. This is, it reminds me actually of sailing. Okay, you're on a 40 footer, so it's not like you're on a little duffy, nope. but this sounds like you're on a duffy. You don't yeah, have yeah, any noise. Yeah. Like I really don't feel comfortable to compare the green line <laughs> to a duffy. <laughs> Duffies you never hear. I think it's pretty amazing for the size of the boat that you don't have any sound. It's so quiet. It's just a little humming. Just got to throw that in. I got a new present today. Oh, I got this floating with glasses today. Somebody got floating sunnies. 
So. Thanks for the shout out. <laughs> we kind of felt like it was a good match with the Yacht Sales <laughs> International logo. With the what orange do you guys logo, think? Oh, yeah. With the orange? He's like yep. rocking the orange. Nice. It's right with our theme. So, okay. Very nice. Let's bring the motors to neutral. In the beginning, it's very important to see because you don't feel it here, it's like on a diesel. So now we switch here to diesel. Just switch over? Switch to diesel, yes. Now push the start button. And the other start button. And now. I heard go it. In gear. Feel it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now you're Shoot. going. To, you're going to diesel. Let me turn off that blower right now. We don't need that anyway. There we go. Oh wow, yeah. What a difference. Yes. Oh yeah. So even on diesel, Greenline is always about comfort and quietness. Very quiet. So now you see your dashboard right here. It yeah. says Gen. Now we're in generation mode. We're not in motor mode anymore. Yeah. And it says zero because we do not put a load on the motor in idle because we do not want to overload. Oh, motor. so for so rev it up, up a little, little bit. And here oh, we go. Look at now this. you see the charge coming in. Now we're recharging with 32. And if you're on the inner coastal in a speed zone, because on electric mode, you usually do a half a load, three quarter load, or yeah. less than half a load. And then when you recharge, you do full load. What means you recharge it quicker yeah. than you discharge it. Our thousand mile range is on diesel alone. So if you're going to use your hybrid system properly, you can extend that tremendously. A lot. Yeah, because you're switching back and forth. You're switching back, switching back and forth. forth. Because what a lot of people do not understand, wow. sometimes I say it's free energy. And anybody would say, there is no free, free energy. energy. There is no such thing than free energy. Well, if you're going anyways, well, yes, is. it is. Yeah. So the difference is you have a diesel efficiency curve and a propeller efficiency curve. Mm -hmm. And right there in the middle, that energy goes down into the exhaust. And that's where we harness our electricity. So we generate electricity with hardly any increase in fuel. So if you get it around the corner a little bit, because the, there's another sandbar right here, and then we switch back to electric. Okay, <laughs> so I think we're good. Just bring it to neutral and see oh, where we drift. Great. Turn on the diesels. Now we switch to electric. Do you have to turn the ignition nope. off? or switch off? to electric. And now you wait when it switches from generator to uh, engine motor, motor. and now you can go. go. So the reason for that delay is because the clutch has to disengage the diesel completely. Otherwise, the momentum of yep. the lead would restart yep. the and diesel. And that's done electrically? Yes, that's a hydraulic. A a hydraulic. hydraulic. Okay. It's electric hydraulic clutch. And I will show that later to all the tech freaks how that works. It's actually a very simple system. And the way it is that simple, any mechanic slash boat electrician can work on this boat and that's it. There is no very high tech gimmicks. You don't need a rocket engineer from Musk to fix that <laughs> or maintain it. <laughs> Let's talk about the loop. Have you ever done it? The great loop is on my bucket list. Okay, so same here. We've yet to do it. It's totally something we would love to do. And initially, like the conversation was like, man, this is a really great boat for it. First of all, the bridge clearance yeah. is amazing. You don't have to think about it. Nope. Do you have any boats right now that are doing the loop? Actually, this year we have four customers doing the great loop this year so wow. at the same time. And I think next year we're going to have eight or nine boats on the great wow. loop at the same time. What happened when the first green line came on the great loop, it went like a wildfire. Everybody said, we need one too. That's the perfect boat to do it. Specifically when you go down the Mississippi, most of the time is idling. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here we are. With this system, you can eliminate almost 90% out of your idling hours. Also, speaking of resale, for example, people always yeah. look at engine hours. It's one factor of resale and value. Back to my examples, we just sold a used 48 green line. Uh, what the gentleman bought in 2019 from us. Mm -hmm. He kept it here in Fort Lauderdale and they used the boat every week, once, twice a week. Mm -hmm. They went to the Bahamas, they went to Fort Myers, to the Keys, a lot of trips. When we took the boat back, after almost four years, I looked at the hour meters, 370 hours on the diesel. We pulled out the hours out of the electric motors. We do that, we plug in and the factory can read it out. Yeah. Yeah. There were over 15 hours on electric motors. In Fort Lauderdale, between shooters and Pier 66, and he never turned on the diesel to go for dinner. Hours? 15, 15 hours? No, 1500. 1500. 1500 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we had a 370 hour boat instead of almost 2000 hour boat. That is incredible. So, and the great loop boats, we will see when the first ones are finished with the great loop, they come back with less than a third of an average boat. That is going to be so interesting to see those numbers. Yes. I'm so curious. I think you should have that on your website. Anybody who knows diesel engines a little bit will probably agree that it's not good for a diesel engine to just idle at all the time. It's just bad for the, for the motor, like the ideal load percentage 
percentage of a diesel engine is around 80 percent that's what they like to be run so the good thing is if you have a hybrid electric hybrid boat in general you run the diesel engine at 60 to 80 percent because right. that's what you do when right. you recharge to recharge right and then you switch it off and you use the electric so it's actually the best of both worlds yeah well we just left our dock in downtown Fort Lauderdale when we do a sea trial if you run in a regular boat you're firing up your diesel you check in your systems you're doing your lines you're going out in the ocean it's just it's an, it's an hour yeah so then we do a 15 20 minute sea trials we go back it's at least an hour by the time you got tied up and shut down the diesels so doing a sea trial is somewhere between two and a half and three hours on the meters. So when I do the same thing with the hybrid, like we took off, all on electric, just before I get to the inlet, I'm firing up the diesel to get some temperatures into it, do my 15, 20 minute sea trials, come back on electric. So I'm putting between 15 and 30 minutes. So now 10 sea trials, yeah. 30 hours. One hour and a half, two hours. I also think of how people use boats in Marina del Rey in California. You know, where we did a lot of our boating is you go harbor cruises too. You do harbor cruises, which you will never turn on the diesel. You go out of the marina, which takes you 20 minutes. You come back and takes you 20 minutes. And when you're out there, honestly, you just want to be out. Like there is no real destination unless you're going to Malibu or you're going to Catalina yeah, Island. Yeah. But in general, you're just taking people out, your friends for an hour and you're coming back in. This makes so much sense. Yeah, and here in the Lauderdale area, what we do a lot is go and bar hopping by boat. We have so many <laughs> restaurants and bars yep, where you go bar you hopping. you guys do. And you do have a designated driver you though, do. right? Of course, <laughs> Yeah, always. of course. <laughs> the wind and the current right now. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. pushing us. Wow. So now, that's what I said. Look at this the now. The thruster, right? Yeah, Look no at this. Point. There's no point, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. How there's much no quicker point. it it's makes no point. such a difference. And you're wasting a lot of energy on the main engines right. if you try to fight it. Yeah. It's not a shame to use a bow and the bow it makes thruster. It makes sense. But you called it out. You said, like, you're not used to it. It used to be like, if you're a good captain, you don't need it. You don't use it. But this yeah. is different. As long as I'm boating, back in the days, we didn't have bow thrust. Yeah. And when they came up, it was like, look at this guy. He can't operate his boat. So yeah. having yeah. a bow thrust, that was almost shameful. It makes boating so much easier, so much nicer. Well, you got to grow with the technology as well. Right. When you have it, you use it. You also don't use it. It goes bad. Everything you don't use just goes bad faster. If you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> this is awesome right now. It's just it idle forward. So idle quiet. forward. We're going a little bit with the current and the and wind is coming from let's behind. Let's go show everybody how quiet it is. Let's and right now you can go 34 hours in that speed before you run out of battery. That's a long ways. 35 and yeah, a half. Yeah, we got more sun right now because right now you're recharging faster with the solar than you're discharging. Ah. So now that's... Oh yeah, 37. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah it, goes, it keeps so going up. Right now we're doing... 30 3.5 knots but we have a wind and we have a current in the back but we're burning less energy than the solar panel recharges. This is incredible. You're just doing a little that's champagne cruise, hanging out. You're not going anywhere anyway. You just want to be out in the water. Yeah, it's that's perfect. why this 20 nautical miles is the wrong statement. Yeah, but you can't really. Yeah. But you cannot say uh, whatever. People, people want the number, so you they have to be like, number. okay, this is a definite realistic. And then but right. the, the real way you use the boat is... No, yeah. it's completely different. Makes sense. And so if you're going to manage your power properly, I mean, you can go so long, it's unbelievable. I like how you're being so nice to Rico because you're making him look so tall right now. Yeah, because you're standing lower than me. standing down there. No, 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 sit there. Do me a favor, sit down. And now get your feet up, all the way up. Now you can stand. What? I can look outside, actually, if the roof would be open. What? What? Oh, my God. You're kidding. And now the seating position is It's like a whole platform down here. Yeah. It's just a little step. That's amazing. Now you can look even through the roof. Oh, look at that. Oh, I really like this boat. Cool. You want to do the loop yeah. with me? You can take you, one, we take one, rent, and do the loop together. Can you rent one to us? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for somebody who's buying one and putting it in charter because we have so many, so many customers want to charter one. And we you will, guys know who to contact. There you right go. Right here. We <laughs> really, really, really would support that a lot if somebody would take a green line and put it in charter. So uh, cool. All right, let's go show everybody how quiet it is. What it feels like on the exterior when you're out cruising like that. All right. So anyway, we'll show you the whole tour, but we just want to give you guys a little run around to show you what it feels like to be on board of one of these underway on electric. All you hear is water. You cannot tell me that this is different from sailing. It's almost weird. And you have a freedom to go any way we want you without You know how it feels? It feels like you're getting towed. Yes, it feels like you're getting towed. 100% agree. 
That's a good observation. Right? So true. Just yeah. hear some water sound and yeah. that's it. All right, maybe we should give you guys a little bit of an exterior tour and then take you on the interior and show you what this body is like on the inside. Perfect, let's do it. All right. Well, first of all, that's yeah. a huge fold down swim platform. Very, very cool. Oh my gosh, the Bahamas, fantastic. But now, I, now I'm just thinking like, you know, anybody who owns a pet, a dog, has small children, grandchildren, whatever it might be, it's completely closed in. And you're completely safe on the way. Super safe, so easy, but also so useful. Really like it. We're gonna open up some of these hatches and give you guys more of a tech engine room and all that once we come back into the dock. We're trying to do it while we still have good weather, which is about to change. Another thing, obviously, you, know, you wouldn't want to take the boat out necessarily in like a hurricane or like a real crazy storm. But if you do have some bigger following seas, this with is the really transit nice. being folded up, it's definitely nice. Agreed. So a couple of seats here. Looks like there's a, a bit of storage underneath. This one is open, yeah. Yeah, that's what we have cable our in there. power. Exactly. We have side entrance doors on both sides. We also have the transom shower right there, as well as a straw water inlet. And here we have our emergency bilge pump. That's right. The cleats, the way they're mounted on top of the uh, blue box here, it's very convenient. If you're not super mobile and you want to twist over and go under and bend down, and I mean, putting a line, a dock line onto these cleats, it's very, very convenient. And they also thought about it's very useful because just the way this boat was stocked as well, this was all used and the shape and protection is really well done. Yeah. That line was running across. Okay, we're gonna go forward. Keep in mind, you guys, this is a 40. I think it's very, very safe. Most of the time, I feel like you're on a 40 foot boat, you, everything is a bit more exposed, sure. you know? Of course, you are going sideways for most of us, but it is very safe and very well protected for kids and pets. Agreed, 100%. agreed. Okay, go forward and look, now I can actually walk completely straight. We have our side windows here as well that you can open up. Yeah, you get a for, couple of steps for going cross up breeze. towards the bow. Cup holders. Oh, cup holders. Yeah, and the layout cushion. There's a B-mini that comes up right there. So normally there is a sun pad going, actually a cushion going, but with the strong winds we're having. We're prepping for that weather that's coming at us. I hope you can hear us properly because it is a little windy. It is definitely windy. Um, but let's walk through. We have the bow. Yeah. Really nice layout cushion, actually. Yeah, so you have the B-mini that you could put up. That looks like a little backrest for the cushion. Exactly. The up. And then I was a bad deck hand, and I just threw this line here because I wasn't sure where it's supposed to go. So that's me. That's not yeah. how it's normally <laughs> supposed. That's on me, OK? You get the windlass here, and then the anchor setup is very different. It's almost like a pocket anchor. It is a pocket anchor. Ah. It is actually a proper pocket anchor, as you guys can see there. Oh, yeah. Like a big boat. Oh, how cool. That's very, very unusual. Very cool, actually. Really like it. They did everything proper, you know, just to protect the boat from any chafing. The teak looks the really lines, nice. Yeah. yeah. So we got the anchor locker right there. Yep, let's check it out. Oh, lots of storage, too. Tons. And there is a anchor wash right there. Yeah, and the chain is in the proper bucket, so it's not just making, you know, everything around dirty. Yeah. We got a windshield wiper on each of the windshields. We have a searchlight, we have a forward-facing camera, actually. Hmm. Radar, TV antenna, and the VHF antenna as well. And you could see right there, the solar panels are nicely raised just to allow them to have the airflow and the breeze so they can efficiently perform. And also, they don't transfer the heat onto the roof. Very into true. the cabin. They really did a good job there. Well ventilated, yeah. Exactly. Look at this huge sunroof. I know. Wow. I, I know. mean, it's great if you're really cruising, you really can Makes turn off your like air conditioning and you just agreed. enjoy the breeze. Oh, you guys could feel the breeze. Oh, okay. wow. This feels different. Yeah. Why is this? This feels so much wi is this is, wider. Yes. The whole cabin is offset. So we get more wider here and more cabin no space. Uh, this is brilliant. Yeah. Instead of losing the cabin space, right. because you make both wide, you make one a little bit wider. Yeah. Yep. and the other one a little narrower. You guys, Look this at that. is so much easier to walk on. So this is your main side. So when you jump out of this here, you can right. easily... That's your ah. main docking side because you yep. have the side door and that's your main side. The other side is if you have to dock on that side. I've yet to see that and I think that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I can Incredible. very comfortably walk. Oh yeah, you can walk. comfortably walk in. So we have our diesel fuel here. Uh -huh. They've got rails everywhere. All right, should we go on the interior? Yes. Okay, we'll show you guys So the we got interior. a sliding door here and we have a huge window. So this window opens up yeah, just like that. Open the latches and then it pops out automatically. 
And wow. then you can flip, wow. you can this flip down the back so leg. Nice. There we go. Wow, look at that. Check this out. That really extends. I mean, that's how I probably space. I would use the boat all the time. I would be on board. I probably would never close it. 100%. Unless it's too hot that you need air conditioning. Yeah. But other than that, you open the side door, you open the sunroof, open this here. Oh, look, somebody left the key for us already. Oh, someone left the key for us? Just <laughs> put it in the pocket. Just put it in my pocket. <laughs> this is cool, really cool. I mean, you could put a couple of little stools there, a little bar stools. That's what I would get, probably just like little, like foldable, like director chairs. chairs. Yeah, yeah, that works. So crazy how loud the bounce turn thruster is. Wow, this thing turns, huh? Yeah. All right, so we've got a two burner induction cooktop, sink, microwave oven, some drawers here, here as well. Oh, very nice. Very cool that it's got this little ledge to make sure it's all good. I found you more drawers, more? sorry. No <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are three the more drawers down. here, very open large ones. One. Oh, I get to open stuff, yay. Yeah, maybe, just for a little bit. And I'm assuming it's our fridge. The fridge and, are, and look at the size of the fridge for a 40 foot boat. Well, yeah, what? this makes me jealous compared to our old boat. Oh, wow. This is great. That's a bigger fridge than we have right now in our condo. You can totally, totally do the loop. I do have a question for you. If you are leaving your boat somewhere, like let's say you're out in the anchor and you've got the fridge, you load it up with stuff. How does it work with the solar? Is it enough? Yeah, that's the beauty. I mean, you can leave that boat on a mooring ball. And we had customers specifically buy a green line because it's completely self-sustained. You can put it on a mooring ball indefinite and run your fridge and freezer and no never run out of way. That's amazing. We had a couple, they waited 20 years to get a mooring ball in Boston. Oh, wow. It was a 20 year waiting period. And then as soon as they got the go, they had six months to put a boat on there, otherwise they lose it. So oh, they, they lose came the and bought a green line immediately because that's the only boat right now in the market where you can leave on a mooring ball indefinite, not cleaning out your fridge and freezer every time you leave. It is brilliant. It is so true. I mean, we have friends, you know, they're not liveaboards and they constantly have to take the food because they're also thinking like, well, what if the electricity is, goes out? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, mm -hmm. everything goes bad. They come back to their boat, yeah. the freezer is melted, stuff's gone, like stuff is bad. Yeah, now imagine having meats and fish frozen in oh. there. Ooh, yeah, you don't want to come back to that. But it happens, it happens all the time. I you, know, I know. you with your yacht management have had it a few times. Yep. Come back to check on a boat and everything in the fridge went bad. Yeah. All right, we keep going. Thanks for driving, Udo. <laughs> Piloting. Okay, we have a little bit of storage here. Some drawers. These are cool. Uh -huh. I like these. We have a pop-up TV, looks yeah. like. This table is high-low table and there's a cushion so you can make a bed or a lounge out of it. There's a dead bolt in the center. Just take it out. Just unbolt it. This one? Yeah, keep turning it for a while. And then you can move your table. The only way you really need the oh. dead bolt is when you're in really rough water. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, keep, it's keep, anchor point. Yeah, take them out. We need to take it out anyway if you want to get to the engine. So oh. now oh. you can move your table. Just slide it. Wherever you want. It has a soft that, rubber. That's protective, protective Rubber meter. things on it. So you can move the table farther back so it's out of the way if you don't need it. Oh, yeah. so cool. So you can put it high or low and you can also right. put a cushion on it right. and make it a full blown bed. Right. Okay, more storage. That is, oh, no. no. That's your breaker panel. Okay. So you get the battery switches down there on the bottom, then the inverter remote and the breaker panel for yeah. the high voltage and the low voltage, DC and AC. And we might me when we're on shore power because this boat the first time i've seen it has a dial for your shore power intake so this boat is equipped with a 50 amp cord so you can dial it up to 50 if you have an old breaker so you can dial it down like on our dock i keep it at 47. Ah. if you come into a marina where it's only 30 you can put a pigtail on 30 dial it down to 30 and it's perfectly fine and you never blow you can even go to 110 to 20 amps and then the inverter will supplement with the battery and the solar power, what you need more than what you can get out of solar power. Ah. So you don't have to cut down on your convenience. Even if you go to a regular 110 outlet, yeah. you can still operate your boat. So you take whatever you can get and right. the boat will, will supplement, supplement the rest. Supplement with the solar and with the battery. Love it. You guys look how awesome these windows are. You have 360 degree view pretty much. All yeah. around, yeah. huge windows. You open that up, you have that door open, you have these windows that you can open forward. You so see the water You feel line. like you're outside. Pretty you know, amazing. You just came up and people ask me, why does Greenline don't put a 40 foot fly bridge? Yeah. Greenline is very proud of their performance. 
we have the lowest stand of gravity. You see that it's not a single step in the floor from the cockpit all the way through. That gives us extreme low stand of gravity. You see, we had so much big boat traffic. We had so much wind, the boat ain't moving. Pretty much so nothing. So you don't need a gyro, whatever. It's extremely stable. And that's why we say we do not want to go below 45 foot with a fly bridge because that's when boats can get unstable. Makes I sense. think it makes total sense. Makes 100% sense. And you have sense. great visibility. I mean, really, if you really want to look forward, like you have that platform that you right. showed us and you just standing all the way out there and you can see everything. You have almost 360. The only little blockage is our big fridge, but yeah. here you got your side door and then you got that cover. 100%. Yeah. Is there any storage underneath? Yes, there's storage underneath here. Yeah, this I is trust the, you, I'm not yeah, going to open is, it. No, this is the cabin. But the I cabin say that's the cabin you will see when you walk down. That's the guest cabin. Or. So these are just for fun? Yes. Ah, and cool. I can tell you one thing. When I move boats out yeah. on the ocean, I put it on autopilot and then I like and to you just sit, sit here. Sit Sometimes right here. just to change, right? Yeah. 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 Well, love it. The passenger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could hang out here. Yeah, you can lay out, it. hang out. It's pretty cool. All right, let's show you the down below. I haven't been on it, guys. Me neither. Literally, like, we're exploring. We're going to explore We've right been now. been out. So, let's see. Oh, okay. All right, let's start here. Going to port. Yeah, we're going to go to port And we got first. this little... Hi again. So, that is sought for natural ventilation. Trying so when to hide from When you Udo don't want to run the air condition, you can ventilate the cabin out much easier. This is awesome. You do have the openable side yes. windows there and a porthole as well. Oh this my is god, this makes me want to do the loop, the Udo, let's do it! <laughs> this is a very generous cabin actually. Yeah, and Super this cool. inner bed, you can slide them to make it a queen almost. Yep. To even have a little sitting area here, you can slide it into a one bed. Those cushions are from upstairs, mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. make the bed there as well. And then, let's see here, what do we got? Here's yep. our closet, hanging locker. You still have a little bit of storage here, so like you can open put a, storage. Yeah. yeah, you can also put a little basket and stuff, and if you know, make it a little more usable. And check these out. Still oh, that's all, all the of way. These. Yeah. And you have another porthole down there. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. And of course, you have a shade here, privacy curtain, basically, if you mm -hmm. want to close this up. So we're gonna go forward, and we have our owner suite, basically. Wow. It's a shared head, so it's a two cabin, one look shared how, head. How big this bed Huge. is! Huge. This is like a mixture between king and queen. What do it's we call it? Queen? A queen, a boat. Queen. Yeah, a queen. Hanging locker here, same thing. Storage all the way on upwards. The, Both all sides. All the way. And these are the windows that we saw from the exterior. And if you open oh, them up, so it nice. is really nice. Man, this boat is very stable. Yeah. We don't move at all. No. It's pretty cool. And then on this side, we have hanging locker as well. And let's check out our head. What's this? Battery switch. It might be for the belt thruster. Got it. And then right here, we can make it an ensuite. Well, it's technically a shared head. Yes. Or we can use it as a day head or a shared head with this cabin. If you're a couple just cruising, the two of you, right? You will use this as an ensuite yeah. and as your um, day head. Wow, this is really good. Very comfortable. Yeah. So you have a one person shower, good size. Some access, oh, access to the tank. Got so an electric head, sink. A bit of a storage here. Actually, mm -hmm. pretty good. And still an openable porthole. You can open yeah, it. Yeah. There's a porthole that you can open. Amazing. What a great Amazing. boat for a couple. Pretty awesome. Uda is communicating because there's traffic going up and down the river. I'll copy that. I'm going up. A little bit exposed storage as well. Pretty cool down there. Yeah, that's a great lot of, boat it's a for lot a couple. of room for a 40 footer. So you have a big boat coming down? Or? No, actually Spildo is towing a sailboat, so I'm going to wait for them at the girls' school here. So for the non-people from Fort Lauderdale, we have our landmark. It used to be a girls' school, so when you come in the new river, you're going to announce that you are at the girls' school, so other boaters know where you are. You don't want to be here and, and oh, get surprised started, yeah. by Spildo towing a 200-footer. That can get really tricky. And especially if the Jungle Queen, I don't know if you're familiar with the Jungle Queen, what's a big stern wheeler. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, I've seen that going yes. up and down yeah, the Yeah, when, the when they come out in the current sideways, you want to be out of their way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take you with them. Usually these guys tow the big boys in and out. Yeah. Surprised they're actually towing a little sailboat. They usually do that when they have mechanical issues. And I used to myself, when we do surveys on older, bigger boats, you know, Something can Better go be wrong. safe than sorry. You would hire the tow to get the boat down the river if it's up river. Actually, you maybe remember Mobjack when we did the survey on Mobjack. Yeah. The 90 foot Choi Lee. Oh, yeah. that's You right. did a video on it. The boat was sitting because it was a liveaboard for a while, and yeah. I said, let's not take it on its own bottom. 
and we took it out with steel toe and then when we went on the survey of course one motor failed and if you have a motor failing right here yeah. like this, I mean, very you, bad situation not you fun, do not yeah. want to go sideways this way and then we went to the survey and towed it up and got everything fixed and going that's when i say i mean if a captain has to prove that he can do it that's one thing but if you're no. gonna have one issue, there's no. no better be safe than sorry. Look at the current right now here. There's no recovery. If something there's goes no wrong. need. No need to be a hero. No. Well, I mean, the cool thing is on this boat, you have a backup. Yes. That's true. You have four motors. So if you lose your electric, you got the diesel. If you lose a diesel, you can switch over to electric. All right. We're going back in. So you're gonna have the spring lines. Definitely windy, and there is a current, and so you guys get to see how easy it is to dock this boat. It's a strong current. Look at this. Woo. Really good current. So right now I'm using the current, what is very strong, to put me in position. I'm in neutral. And now I'm putting my boat with stern truster and bow truster Perfect. in that very tight spot. Yeah. where we have a swirl from the bridge coming. What is the worst scenario you can actually ask for? So the beauty is when I'm coming to a certain point... You just slow it down, right? Now I can put it this, I put that in reverse, and the slowness of the electric motor, look at this, with a diesel you would be in and out, yeah, in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to put this one in reverse, and I'm going to hold the boat in the current without... Yeah, really slowing down, yeah. ...clutching in and out. Both motors in gear, and we're easing in now i'm actually slowing it down too much <laughs> <laughs> and we're easing it into the slip with no diesel clutch in and out that electric propulsion makes it so much easier to dock oh yeah now i can go out to my spring lead even in worst hurricane and current condition it's very easy to manage so we've been boating now for almost three hours and yeah. we ran the diesel for maybe 10 minutes. 10, so. 10 minutes just for it's demonstration so. reasons? Just for demonstration reasons. How much battery power we have left? Right now we got 63%. Earlier when we had solar, we went 34 hours on 15 hours. So yep. it bounces yep. back and forth. Here we have right now no sun plus the buildings and everything. Yes. That changes a lot. But we would have plenty to keep going. So does the boat even have a generator still or no? No and yes, because you don't have <laughs> a third generator, but you got two generating units. What's, that's that's why what we you always say. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah. we call it the E unit. It's either generator yeah. or motor. Yeah. So we got two 10 kilowatt generators to recharge yeah, the batteries. That's, that's just amazing. Powered by the main yeah. propulsion diesel. Yeah. You so guys are torturing everybody, not showing the engine room? We gotta show the engine yes. room. Do we have to turn anything off or on or do anything? No, we're all good. We're gonna go right into the engine room right now. Oh, oh. wow. Oh, it's just a D3. Easy. Yep. With a D3, we're reaching about 23, 23 and a half knots. Really? So we have a comfortable cruise speed within 17 and 19 on diesel. We get it up to eight knots on electric. I recommend between four and a half and five knots cruise on electric. That's where you get the best range out of it. And then sometimes you see you back off a little bit. You're losing like 0.1 knot, but you're increasing your range by 30%. So it's all about how to play with the efficiency yeah. and the situation right here. And to explain the system, let me stand on the plate. We have a standard Volvo D3. Then here is our E unit. On top is the electric actuator for the clutch because the clutch is the automotive steel clutch between yeah. the diesel and the E unit. And then you have a standard CF gearbox. Let me turn on the electric real quick. Then you see, I'm gonna turn on the ignition. Oh, and there soon, we go. Now we're on electric, so the actuator disengages the yep. motor. Now I'm turning on the motor, and the shaft is turning. Now we're moving forward. So I now when spinning. you're switching back to diesel, then the clutch engages the diesel, and you turn on the motors, and you go. That's great. Yeah, straight shaft, dripless seals, shaft yes. seals. 
You have still a lot of space in there, actually. Yeah, it's pretty good size motor compartment. On the green line, the 33, the 39 and the 40 have straight shafts. The 45, 48 have V drives and the new 58 mm -hmm. will have V drives too. So we move the motors in the back because on these boats we have cabins right here. I'm just thinking, I mean, for this boat here, the engines are actually in the perfect location for the trim of the boat. Yes. It's because you have no weight aft no, at all. No. So you always have right. already naturally trimmed. Right. And then we have two fuel tanks with the equalizer pipe, two water tanks with the equalizer pipe. So when you fill up water half of it, you don't have and it's always perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. You just showed us how the diesel motor disengages and engages right. again, how you switch over. What would happen if this mechanism for some reason is not working? It's a spring-loaded system, mm -hmm. so the clutch would engage the diesel and you can run home on diesel. So if you lose power, that's the yeah. thing. Whatever reason you lose power, then the diesel will still run and you have a get home. So that gives you two diesels and two electric motors. So yeah. if two yeah. diesels fall, fail, you can go home on electric. If yeah. both electric motors would fail, you get home on diesel. But it's that incredible. is very, very unexpectable. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> then pretty, you're having a really it's bad day. It's actually pretty interesting because when we run the diesel engines, yeah. it wasn't that loud. No, considering, not at all. Because I thought they were aft. Me too. Considering they're literally like right below you. I, I really thought they were aft as well. Yeah, yeah. All you heard was the blowers. Yeah. And then you guys turned them off. And you turned the blowers off, you didn't hear much didn't at all. You didn't hear much anything. Yeah. Very, very quiet. Yeah. So what's aft? Aft, you have your loss of red. Oh. I'm Let's check it out. Holy oh, wow. what? It's connected? Yes, it's, it's one what? big story. You can through. load it through. Right. Oh, I mean, what are you, what are you putting? What are you putting? <laughs> Blow up stand up paddle boards. Toys. Sea bobs. You can put anything. Anything. So much space. Put some deck chairs if you want to have some deck, deck chairs. Deck chairs. You can fit so true. Lots of storage. You can put a dinghy in there. Uh, and a rollable. Actually, we had actually a rib, a foldable rib. Foldable, yeah. Oh, that yeah. fit in there. Let me close the sunroof because we're yeah. getting some rain. We literally just made it in time and it starts to rain, you guys. We are so lucky. So lucky. So the beauty is you have a remote control. So when you have a back in situation and a slip, you can walk off the boat, and when you're gone, you can close it so nobody can enter your boat. That's pretty good. Absolutely actually. love that. It's like your wow. own little passerelle. Look how much of an extension that right. is of your cockpit. It's really large. So where's your swim ladder? The swim ladder is on the side. Yeah, you saw it right there. And ah, wait a second, okay. right? This okay. is great. I usually stop it yeah. right here, and then you're going to secure it. You're going to secure it, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for taking us. Hey, thanks we for really coming. Appreciate it. I had so much fun cruising around Fort Lauderdale. We've been like talking always. about this for a year. Oh, yeah. I know. It, it like, was literally a for a year. Yeah. We're like, we need to do this. Yeah. I want to go out on one yeah. of these and really experience it. Make sure you are following us on our second channel. We'll put Uro's information in the description underneath the video if you are interested in Green Line or Green Line Ocean Plus. Yeah. Do the honors. Really enjoy the outtakes. Okay. <laughs> Bye. The oh. folks from California need to be trained. She's talking smack about California. Yeah. <laughs> no, never. I would never do that. We even have fans from the side here. Hello! We are on a video shoot here for Green Line Yards. <laughs> and I just said we got some fans Hi. on the sideline here. <laughs> the Ooh. wind and Ooh. the rain. Look, we could have came in right now. It would have wow. been as fun. Enjoy the outtakes. Do the honors. Oh. We probably Do we have any outtakes? I'm sure we do. The outtakes. Outtakes. We, we always have outtakes, have outtakes in, in the video. end of the video. Okay. I we guess Udo oh, never watched all the way to the end. Yes, yeah, so the, oh, that's the outtakes. That, that's the know. outtakes. Kind yeah. This right now is an outtake. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is an outtake. What just okay. happened is an outtake. I'm learning. I'm learning here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm new to this game. When we, when we have someone who we like, yeah. we usually allow them to say, enjoy the outtakes.